Welcome back to another RC Wars video. We are doing episode two of Low Yielding Wells. On this episode, we're gonna focus on a couple of solutions for tackling a low yielding well problem. So the first one we're gonna talk about is drilling the well deeper. All right, so drilling your well deeper. It's a pretty simple concept, obviously. Let's say in a situation where uh, you just recently drilled a well, or perhaps you have a well and the water table has dropped. There's multiple situations that you can encounter, but we're gonna say for the sake of this well that this is our water table. Um, and basically, you've got a decision, ooh, geez, there's the board. <laughs> I'm closer than I thought. So you've got a decision to make. If In a situation where you're drilling a well, let's say you got the well driller out at your house and he's drilling the well and you're only getting about uh, half a gallon per minute out of the well, and he's drilled to maybe a, a typical depth or he's drilled to the point that what he estimated he would go, let's say 200 feet, he says, yeah, we'll drill about 200 feet. And he comes knocking on your door and says, well, we're at 200 feet, we've got a half a gallon a minute, we hit water at 150 feet. Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to leave it? Do you want me to start a well somewhere else? And let's assume you're probably $10,000 into this thing already. So you've got a decision. Do you want to spend an extra few thousand dollars going deeper in hopes that you're going to get access to more water? Or you've got the other thing to consider. Uh, as you go deeper, you're going to increase this reservoir capacity here. So when you increase the depth of the well, you of course gain that additional capacity because the well static water level typically is going to stay the same. The general rule of thumb is is increasing the depth of your well after it's already been drilled is less advisable than drilling another well simply because it's going to cost you a lot of money to get the well driller out there and for him to actually get to work deepening the well. Almost at that point it makes sense to just put a new well in but there are certain circumstances where you may consider it. I know that in California particularly, there's been a lot of areas with the droughts and stuff that they've been having where the water table has been dropping, my blue marker, so maybe this was the 2008 water table for a particular residence and then now here we are in 2018 and the water table has dropped significantly. But in the situation back in 2008, maybe they had 30 gallon per minute coming out of the well. So they had good production, but they didn't necessarily have water after the water table dropped because the previous bottom of the well was right here. So they decided to go a little bit deeper. I would say in this situation, maybe going, maybe this is a hundred feet. It would probably make sense because you had a history of good water but if you're in a situation back on a low producing well um, where you've only got a half a gallon a minute, all you're really gaining is the reservoir space. You of course can take a chance that you're going to gain more, but it's not a very likely chance unless, and again that ties back to where I said research, look at various wells around the area. If you see that at 200 feet, everybody's getting a half a gallon a minute, but at 400 feet, they're getting 15. Yes, go deeper. Your well guy didn't do a very good job putting the quote together because he should have known that in that area, you need to go 400 feet. So there are circumstances where it makes sense to go deeper, but it doesn't always make sense to go deeper, especially if your well runs completely dry. Because as I mentioned in the previous video, when your well runs completely dry, sometimes that has to do with the actual geological reduction of water in a particular area. So essentially by going deeper, you aren't necessarily gonna be guaranteed more water. If the well has just completely dried up, and you don't know that the water level has dropped, chances are drilling the well deeper are not in your favor. Um, so just kind of use that with caution. Oftentimes not over pumping the well and keeping an eye on the water level as the years go by will give you an indication of how well things are going in terms of maintaining a consistent static water level if you find yourself in a situation where the water level is gradually dropping, then you could try using less water, being more strategic about your water usage, because it could be that you're on the verge of over pumping the well. It also could just be a situation where 
the water table is dropping like in California, the droughts, you've just got more people using water out of the ground because they've got less surface water available. And so that's a situation where the whole water table has dropped. It's not a geological situation where the water table has, you've created a pocket where the water is no longer going to be present due to over pumping. So those are two different situations entirely. So when I mentioned keeping track of your well, basically what I'm recommending you keep track of is your static water level. Uh, checking that maybe, it doesn't have to be very regularly, every couple years, every few years, just to see and compare that with the well log. And you can take that information, ask your neighbor, ask somebody that lives near you, you know, and take a look at what wells have gone in in your area. And you can get a good sense of whether it's affecting just you or whether it's affecting a wide array of people without too much work. And when it's affecting a larger group of people, that's typically a drop in the water table as a whole. And of course, in areas where you've got an aquifer, depending on the size of the aquifer, it is normal for the level to change a little bit as the years go by, uh, up and down, depending on the amount of water and so forth, because aquifers are replenished mostly by surface water, groundwater, that comes from lakes, streams, rain, winter runoff, etc. Um, so it is normal for that to change a little bit, but it's not normal for it to consistently drop and drop and drop and drop and drop unless other circumstances are affecting it. And of course those circumstances could be more people using groundwater, again back to California, or uh, a change in the geological composition of the soil, which is going to result in less water because you've got essentially a pocket of over pumped area. Um, so that's basically drilling a, drilling a well deeper in a nutshell. It's kind of a gamble. That's the best way I can put it. It's a gamble. And the best situation that you could find yourself in is you get a low producing well, you've done your research, you know you're probably only going to get a half a gallon a minute out of this thing. And based on this depth, let's say you get 20 gallons in the well every you know half a gallon a minute so every 40 minutes you get 20 gallons well the best strategy that you could employ would be some sort of a collection system where you can utilize this well pump the water that's available and store it for use later and that way you're not taking as big of a gamble because you could put five thousand dollars in going deeper and not come up with anything but an extra 40, 50, 60, 100 gallons of water capacity, or you could put that $5,000 towards a water well storage system that is gonna be able to hold hundreds of gallons of water, possibly thousands of gallons of water in drought situations, in situations where you don't have water in your well, you've got a storage tank, you can have water delivered, so it's kind of a better way to spend your money. But we're gonna talk more about those solutions in our next video, actually where we're going to talk about the proper equipment to use with a storage system and just kind of look at some of the different things on the market. So let's move on to our next point. Okay, so up next we're going to talk about shock and clean a well. So what that involves typically is using more often than not chlorine. So you could use Clorox bleach, but the difference between industrial chlorine and Clorox is Clorox, I believe, is like 4%, 4.5%, whereas the stuff that we sell that you should be able to get at any well supplier, unfortunately, it's not something we can ship, um, but is 12%. So that higher concentration means it's going to require less volume to treat your well, depending on the capacity in the well. So let's take a look here at the board at kind of the same well. All right, so what I'm referring to when I'm talking about shocking and cleaning a well is, of course, the introduction of chlorine into the well. So maybe this is our water level in this scenario, and our, um, our perforations have start, started to get plugged up, either with iron bacteria or some other material that is starting to plug those perforations up. And, and the, the chlorine serves a couple of purposes. One, it is an extremely effective bacterial killer so it's going to kill if your well has become contaminated with iron bacteria if it's got giardia e coli anything that is a potential risk to health that is going to help to sanitize and clean the well 
And remember, any time that you replace a pump in a well, you want to make sure to use chlorine because when you pull that out, the pipe goes on the ground, the pump's out of a box, who knows who's touched it. Um, just a good idea to chlorine, chlorinate, but you don't chlorinate to this extent. So shocking a well is actually using a, a high, high concentration of chlorine, putting it down in the well, and then typically what you do is you take the water, you pump it out of the well, and of course you have to use like a frost free hydrant or something and then you just circulate it back down into the well so the idea here is you, the pump is stirring this water up it's moving water all over the place it's pumping it up and then it's dumping back in the well so that that water can kind of run down the walls of the well and help to scrub that clean the other thing is in addition to the antibacterial aspects of the chlorine and it killing everything it touches. Chlorine is a really strong oxidizer, so any of that rust, um, so like if you've got a lot of iron or iron bacteria, of course iron bacteria is gonna die, but when it comes to iron, iron exists in water in two forms, soluble and non-soluble, and what it takes to pull the iron molecule out of the water is oxi ox oxygen, oxidization. Uh, so since this is a strong oxidizer, if you've got a lot of iron buildup and so forth in the well and you're churning things around, then that's going to cause all that iron to accumulate at the bottom of the well. It's going to kind of slough off the walls and fall down to the bottom of the well and help to clean things up. A situation where, <coughs> a situation where chlorine is not going to be effective is if you've got uh, clay or if you've got some sort of a concrete forming in the well depending on the soil composition so that ties back into soil composition um, but if you've got something organic or you've got something that's going to be affected by that oxidization then this is a good way to go it's going to clean the well this is a good thing to do anyways every so often but it can in some specific cases improve the yield of the well by essentially taking it back to where it started when it was first drilled by cleaning those perforations. Um, it's not going to do much in terms of moving out beyond the well because it just doesn't, since you're just circulating the water in here, you may get a small amount of chlorine that kind of goes out and cleans up a little bit, but the main focus of this application is to clean up the perforations so that the water flows into the well more easily. So there are other methods. If you do have clay or some other material that's building up that is not going to be affected by this process. So this seems like a good idea if you're not quite sure what's going down, what's going on down in the well and you want to try an inexpensive method. Like we sell a gallon of this chlorine for I think like seven or eight bucks and it's really inexpensive typically you're not going to need more than a gallon to perform this process of the high concentration stuff that we sell um, so it's a cheap way to test and see if this will solve your problem before going into more expensive solutions so in not our next video our next video we're going to focus on reservoirs but the video after that we're going to talk about some of the other technologies and methods employed um, for actually rejuvenating the well, which involves a higher degree of equipment and so forth that, that would solve whatever this doesn't solve, or would at least clean whatever this doesn't clean, because if the well's dry, the well's dry. Okay, so last but not least, the other thing you want to remember is this high concentration of chlorine is not something that you necessarily want to get in the house, especially if you're on septic, so you don't want to be running it down the drains or anything like that. Typically, once you're done circulating it, you'll just dump it all out on the ground somewhere uh, until the concentration gets low enough that you can start running it back into the house. It will most likely kill whatever you dump it on, so I would be cautious about where you're, where you're putting that. Okay, so that's our video for today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget we got two more episodes coming up relating to things that you can do to address a low yielding well. These are just a couple of options, drilling deeper and chlorinating or cleaning the well out. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about reservoir systems. Then in the following video, we've got some other surprises in store. So don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. We'll catch you next time.